Hi guys and uh, hello after a very long time. Uh, I have been busy uh, in the past few months and uh, I have really missed interacting with you guys. And so here we are uh, restarting our uh, lectures and we will restart from our 5G lectures and I hope uh, you like it. So our today's topic is regarding non-standalone uh, 5G architecture and about the split pillar concept. So what I will start is with uh, a basic uh, network topology of uh, non-standalone uh, network uh, in terms of uh, 5G NR and from there we will take it to how uh, split pillar works in 5G as per the 3GPP specifications. So first let's look at how uh, an NSA uh, network works uh, with LTE and NR. So first of all uh, in NSA uh, we can have two things. So we can have two configurations. The first is uh, LTE as the master and NR as the secondary. And the second one is uh, usually the NR as the master and the LTE as the secondary. As you know that uh, the LTE networks are mature uh, these days, so usually uh, the most common thing uh, in NR deployment uh, currently being used is uh, this configuration where we are using LTE as uh, the master node and uh, the NR as a secondary node. So how does uh, the network interact in terms of core network, in terms of the data plane and in terms of the control plane? Uh, let's have a look at that and from there uh, we will see uh, the logical signaling, how uh, the master node first interacts and then how it adds uh, the secondary node. So first of all, uh, for example, this is our MME and this is our SGW. So this is uh, basically your core part of the network and this is your uh, serving gateway. So we will here have this our master. So this is your LTE node, E node B and this is your NR G node B. So going from this uh, concept of LT as a master and NR as the uh, secondary. So we'll write here as master and here as secondary. So now what happens is uh, that your LT master node will have your S1 control plane with the MME. So all the control signaling, all the RRC setup will be done with this LTE node and that is why it is the master node. First your RRC setup and or your connection setup will be done on the LTE node uh, which is known as the anchor and then this LTE node will add your NR node. So for that case we have an X1, X2C and X2U and it works both ways. So we have an X2 control plane and an X2 user plane which exists between these two nodes. You will see that there is only one connection S1U. This also has an S1U. Sorry, this will go here. So what you can see here is that the NR node has no control plane connection with MME and that is why it is called the secondary node because you require the LT master node to first set up the connection with MME and then that MME will get your secondary NR node. So now let's look at how it happens in terms of signaling. So here we will have for example our E node B here we have our G node B and here we have our UE. So first of all uh, your E node B will set up your connection with the UE. So this will happen in this stage. Then your E node B will send a secondary node addition message to your G node B. And when your G node B sends a SNG node B completion message to your E node B, 
after that you will send the RRC reconfiguration message to your UE and if you uh, basically decode these RRC reconfiguration messages in that RRC reconfiguration message you will have the details of your NR node for example which frequency which bandwidth and which uh, con particular configuration your UE needs to monitor the main messages uh, the main uh, elements of that message will contain your NR config then it is your NR frame structures and then your NR sinks. And after this RRC reconfiguration message, your UE will send your RRC reconfiguration complete. And after that, your uh, RAT signaling will start. For example, your phone will send the RAT messages, and uh, in the end, your secondary node B will be added, and then your uh, <coughs> UE. Can interact with the 5G node for its data and also for the LT node with its data. So, right now we are not uh, discussing uh, that how that data would be split, uh, how the data is, for example, if you are streaming and you are connected to your LT node and you are connected to your 5G node as well, how that data will be split and at which layer it will be actually split. We will discuss it uh, in the second part of that. Another thing that uh, is to be considered here is that how do you add the secondary node after the primary cell has been added in terms of LTE your secondary node can be added for example one with uh, the sync and with new security information secondly it can be added with sync and no security information and thirdly it can be a blind uh, reconfiguration to your uh, 5G node all of these three things are being used in uh, current networks and depends on uh, the amount of uh, density in your network and amount of the, the settings that are used using in the network. So in the next part, let's see how, what is the concept of split pair. So in networks, everything works in zeros and ones for example you are streaming for example you are browsing you are doing any activity you are gaming so what ha will happen is that your data this is your data and this is your data stream and this is your ran which has an LTE part and which has an nr part so how your network will basically use your LT and your NR to f uh, function and that is where the concept of split bearer comes. In split bearer basically uh, if you know the layers of the network for example you have this PDCB then you have RLC then you have MAC and then you have the physical layer. So this will be for LTE as well and the same will have your PDCP, RLC, MAC and physical for NR. Now what happens is that when you have an NR layer so you have two or three options either use an MCG bearer that is your master cell group bearer either you use your secondary cell group bearer or you use a split bearer. The concept of split bearer comes when you, when you use both LTE and NR to provide data to your uh, user. Now before that in LTE we have the concept of multiple bearers for example we have the radio bearer, we have the ERAB, we have the SRBs etc etc. But all of these bearers are basically uh, divided in terms of which part of the network that you are accessing. <clears throat> For example, if you are accessing from the UE to the E node B, it was called radio bearer, it is still called radio bearer. If you are completing from the radio for signaling barrier that is called your SRB. But in this case, the split is basically coming on the PDCB part. So what happens is that this is your data stream it comes into your NR PDCP and in here you decide that 
or how much amount of data you want to send to your LTE RLC and which amount of data you want to send to your NR RLC. So this will be split. Some of it will come here in the LTE and some of it will go here in RLC and then all of these things will be carried out by the individual node. So the split of the bearer will happen in the PDCP and the flow control will also act on PDCP. So what amount of data you send in the NR will depend on how much data you choose for example 60, 40, 30, 70 any much of data that you want to be sent through NR and what amount of data you want to be sent through LTE. And this is the concept of split pair and this is the concept which basically forms the basis how you utilize your 5G and LD network simultaneously to serve a user which is connected both to an LT and to a 5G node. So I hope uh, you uh, it, this will help you understand the concepts of NSA and the concepts of split pair and I will make it sure that we meet uh, regularly on a weekly basis and if you like to discuss any particular topics uh, regarding 5G or LT please uh, uh, write it in the comment section and please subscribe to our videos and hope to meet you soon very soon this time. Thank you.